Hello. On a hot summer's day in rural India, two teenage girls, Rani and Roja, sat under a tree to escape from the hot sun. They wondered why they felt cool or cooler sitting in the shade of the tree. The answer seemed obvious. The leaves and branches of the tree were shielding them from the hot rays of the sun. But they wondered further, would different leaves have different cooling effects? And their question led to a project called, not surprisingly, the cooling effect of leaves. And nine months later, working with instructors from our foundation, they won a uh, national science competition, competing with the best and brightest students from across thousands of schools in India. So what does this story teach us? I think it tells us the value of curiosity, the spirit of wonder and inquiry. The mission of the foundation, Augustia Foundation, that I head, is to spark curiosity and creativity in economically disadvantaged children and rural teachers across India. And we're doing this working with governments and uh, private investors, touching over a million children a year. Now, how did we get here? When I quit my job as a banker 10, 12 years ago, it wasn't a bad word then, being a banker, uh, <laughs> and went back to India, I had this sort of idealistic dream of reforming or changing Indian education. So I got a bunch of scientists and educators and college students and school students, and we had a series of discussions, brainstormings. What's working well in the education system? What's working not so well in the education system? And basically, it turned out there was a lack of creativity and lack of curiosity. And to the extent that it had disseminated to the elite, and India was able to produce all these technology breakthroughs, it hadn't disseminated to the masses. And there was a huge chasm between the quality of education that rich people were getting, or the more well-off people were getting, and the masses of India. So we said, can we come up with a model that will help to disseminate this creative temper, the scientific temper, if you like, among the masses of India? My original idea was to set up a school to foster creativity, a small school of maybe a thousand kids. But after these brainstorming sessions, I came to the conclusion that what we really needed to build was a school for schools, a lab for schools. In any case, as this project took, took shape, uh, we unfortunately ran out of money. So we didn't have money to build buildings to attract children to our campus. We'd bought a piece of land, 200 acres of barren land in southern India. So we had another brainstorming session, and somebody said, look, while we wait for money to build the buildings to attract the children and teachers, let's take education out to the villages. How? How about a mobile lab? So we trained our tractor driver, campus tractor driver, to be the first mobile science lab instructor and set him loose in the villages. He spent a few weeks there, and I asked him, Balram, how's it going? He said, excellent. At first, they thought I was a missionary and they ran away, but, but they really loved what we had. It was very engaging, all these low-cost science experiments. So I said, keep doing it till we come up with a better idea or more money. Well, today we have 60 mobile science labs that crisscross the countryside of nine states in India. They're supported by 28 satellite science centers where children and teachers come and do a lot of activity-based learning, project-based learning, hundreds of low-cost science experiments, physics, chemistry, biology, math, and so on. And this barren campus has been transformed into a medicinal park. It's a unique place where we have teacher training. We uh, engage children in very interactive methods of learning, very experiential methods of learning. We bring in about five, 600 poor kids every day. So I think what we have demonstrated to some extent is that creative learning for the poor is easily achievable. In fact, it's probably more easily achievable for poor kids than it is for rich kids because you're forced to devise ways and means and methods of getting things done at a low cost. So the cost of each mobile lab exposure, for instance, is less than 50 cents, US cents. It's very cheap, very inexpensive, and very scalable. And we're touching over a million children a year. So the original idea of a static school with computers and all the rest of that transformed into a laboratory 
a public laboratory, if you like, like a public library. And it's got tremendous outreach. So a few years ago, the Prime Minister's National Knowledge Commission came to me and said, we hear you're doing something out of the box and we're looking for ideas that are out of the box. So can we come and see what we're doing? What you're doing? And they did, and they liked it, and they asked me to make a presentation on how we could scale this up across India, which I did. You can ask me if anything has happened since then, and I'm not a minister, so I don't have the power to make things happen at that scale. Uh, it hasn't happened on an India-wide basis as I hoped it would. But what's happened is a couple of state governments, particularly the one that we operate in, the government of Karnataka in South India, responsible for the education of over 10 million kids, have adopted our model. So we are creating an ecosystem, if you like, for hands-on experiential science education, consisting of a creativity lab, rather like our campus, satellite science centers, mobile science labs, and our lab in a box. And what this is providing the ecosystem, what it's providing the school system, is tremendous leverage, a tremendous injection of the creative spark into the system. So my experience over the last 10 years in helping build this ecosystem, which a lot of people, not just in India, but in other countries, have come forward and said, hey, you know, maybe you could replicate this in our country, tells me that it's actually not so difficult to bring about transformation. A couple of ideas well executed, I know it sounds terribly idealistic, can easily make it happen. What we really need to create are environments, stimulating environments where children and teachers are free to express themselves, to experiment, to be curious. And that leads me to my vision, the new vision I have for India. And somebody at dinner last night said, it's something that ought to apply to countries everywhere in the world, is to create a nation of curious people. You know, forget about dominating the world or being the first in that or first in this. If you just focus on stimulating curiosity and the creative spirit, then by definition you're going to produce products, you're going to create innovations, and you will probably lead in various sectors if that's what you intend to do. So that's the vision we have as a foundation, and I'm here today to learn from all of you and benefit from your knowledge, advice, and uh, everything else. So thank you very much. Thank you.